The Euphrates River, once a source of life and prosperity for countless civilizations over thousands of years, has now dwindled to a mere shadow of its former self. But what is most shocking is what has been uncovered due to its rapid decline. Scientists have recently made a startling discovery that has left them utterly astounded. What was found under the riverbed? And how has it changed our understanding of the history of this ancient river? Stay tuned as we explore this fascinating topic together. The Euphrates River, known as the Frat in Turkish, is the longest river in the Middle East, stretching over 2,800 kilometers, 1,700 miles. It rises in eastern Anatolia, Turkey, and flows southward through Syria and Iraq before finally emptying into the Persian Gulf. The river has been an integral part of human history, with many ancient civilizations, including Mesopotamia, developing along its banks. Today, the river is still an essential water source for irrigation, transportation, and industry. What's fascinating about the Euphrates River is that it has two sources, the Karasu and Murad, ancient Arsanias rivers, which combine near the Kiban district of Elazig province in Turkey. Turkey is the source of both rivers, making it an important country for the river's ecological and economic health. Starting in southeast Turkey, the Euphrates River flows through Syria and Iraq, eventually merging with the Tigris River to form the Shat al-Arab, which empties into the Persian Gulf. Along the way, it has been the center of civilization for the Sumerians and Babylonians, and it has been fought over by many empires, including the Assyrians, Persians, Greeks, and Romans. But that's not all. Did you know that the Euphrates River is mentioned in the Bible? The Book of Genesis is one of the four rivers that flow from the Garden of Eden, forming one of the borders of the land promised to Abraham and his descendants. Moving on to the Book of Jeremiah, we find a prophecy about the Euphrates River. Jeremiah prophesied that the waters of Babylon, including the Euphrates River, would dry up due to their idolatry. This prophecy is significant because, in recent times, the Euphrates and Tigris rivers are indeed drying up. Is this prophecy coming true? You be the judge. And if that does not pique your interest, the Book of Revelation also has a prophecy about the Euphrates River. According to Revelation 16.12, the Euphrates River will dry up during the end times, preparing the way for a large army from the east to cross the river. This is believed to be a sign of the final war between good and evil, where the world's monarchs will converge in the area known in Hebrew as Armageddon. The Euphrates River also holds great importance in Islamic eschatology, with numerous references in the Quran and other prophetic hadiths. It is one of the four rivers flowing from Jannah, paradise, and where great battles will occur, including Armageddon, also known as the Battle of Dabiq. This war is believed to be one of the signs of the end times, as prophesied by the Prophet Muhammad. According to Islamic prophecy, the Euphrates River is home to a hidden mountain of gold that will one day be revealed to the world. This event will signify the approaching end times prophesied by the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad warned that when the Euphrates River recedes, revealing the mountain of gold, people will fight over it, and 99 people out of 100 will be slain. The significance of this hadith, which is authentic and narrated in both Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, emphasizes the importance of avoiding greed and materialism in the face of great temptation. Although the river used to split into numerous channels in Basra, creating a sizable swamp, the marshes were drained in the 1990s by the Saddam Hussein administration to expel the Marsh Arab rebels. However, after the 2003 invasion of Iraq, the draining policy has been changed, and there's a possibility that the marshes might recover. Only very shallow draft vessels can navigate the Euphrates, and they can barely travel as far as the Iraqi city of Hit, which is only 53 meters 58 yards, above sea level and 1,930 kilometers 1,200 miles upstream. Above Hit, the river is impassable for commercial shipping due to shoals and rapids. It is also a crucial source of irrigation for modern-day Iraq and Syria, and it continues to play a major role in the economy and culture of the region. However, tensions have arisen between neighboring countries due to upstream dams and irrigation projects, which have led to water shortages downstream. 
So what is the current state of this mighty and historical water body? The Euphrates River has faced several challenges in recent years, including drought and overuse of water resources. Unfortunately, the construction of dams and irrigation projects upstream in Turkey, Syria and Iraq has led to a decrease in water flow in the river. With over 25 dams and 19 hydraulic plants along its route, human activity has undoubtedly slowed its formerly tremendous flow. This decrease in the river's water flow has significantly impacted the people and ecosystems that depend on the river. For example, it has reduced agricultural productivity and negatively impacted the river's fish and other aquatic species. Additionally, the decline in water levels in the Euphrates has been linked to increasing desertification and land degradation. But wait, there's more. There have also been geopolitical difficulties due to the Euphrates River drying up. Multiple countries share this vital resource, and the allocation and management of water resources have become contentious issues. This has caused political tensions and conflicts. We don't need more. Let's focus on the people affected by this. Local communities are experiencing water scarcity, reducing crop yields, and food insecurity. This, in turn, causes economic hardship. We're talking about people's livelihoods being affected here. Not to mention the decrease in water quality and quantity, which damages the river's ecosystems and biodiversity. The Euphrates River is much smaller now than it was a few years ago, choked by the water policies of Iraq's neighbors, Turkey and Syria, a two-year drought, and years of abuse by Iraq and its farmers. Many officials fear it will soon become half what it used to be. The reed gatherers can be seen standing on land they once floated over and calling out to tourists in a passing boat throughout the marshes. It's heartbreaking to see them raise their rusted sickles and yell Makumai, which translates to, there is no water. Now let us see the mysterious discoveries in the dried up Euphrates that shocked scientists. Who would ever think that drought could be a blessing in disguise? Well, in the case of the Euphrates River, it certainly is. The receding waters have revealed ancient archaeological sites that were previously unknown. According to Ratib Ali al Kubaisi, director of Anbar Province's Antiquities Department, the drought has created a whole new area of possibility. Who would have thought Anbar was one of Iraq's most important archaeological sites? At least 75 archaeological sites were partially excavated before submerging the area, spanning cultures from 3000 BC to the Sumerian and Roman eras. Ancient Jewish communities were also immersed in the vicinity. But now, due to receding floods, Ratib has been able to visit specific locations for the first time, including a cliff with a sequence of pre-Christian tombs etched into its face. One of the most exciting discoveries is the ancient city of Talbes, which dates back 3,400 years. It was made visible by the Euphrates River's receding waters in the Iraqi town of Anah. Moreover, the receding waters have also brought to light the historic Hastek Castle in eastern Turkey's An region. The castle, which can only be accessed by boat, was raised to the surface of the Euphrates River's Kiban Dam Lake by dwindling waters. This rare and valuable discovery provides a unique insight into the architecture and construction techniques of the time, allowing researchers to piece together a more comprehensive understanding of the region's history. But that's not all. The Syrian government constructed the Takba Dam in 1968 without diverting the Euphrates River to the desert or creating lakes. Instead, the dam created a lake that covered the most well-known historical monuments along the river, including hundreds of cemeteries of Syriac Christian monasteries believed to be present in this region. As the water level recedes, some monuments can now be seen, including the underwater cemetery that can be observed when the sky is clear and the lake is clean. If you liked this video, remember to smash that subscribe button right now and check the next video on your screen we've already prepared for you.